am excited about our facilitator, our encourager for tonight, Angela. Um, I said I've been knowing Pastor Angela for a long time. And it seems like I've, I've been knowing of her, but I've just, it seems like I know her now that we share, we share the same father spiritually. I see her works in the kingdom and it just, I'm just impressed by what she's doing for the kingdom of God. So um, Angela, thank you so much for coming. Angela's cousins um, are my nephews and my niece. So, um, and that's how we kind of been knowing each other for, for quite a, for quite a while, but well, I'm going to read her bio, um, and you'll you'll see that she is busy. Angela is busy for the kingdom of God, just encouraging people in the kingdom. And I and I just I was looking on her Facebook page last night, and just I mean it's really encouraging to see um, how talented she is and all the gifts um, that she has. And I just um, and I know that we as mothers will get something out of this tonight that we might be able to encourage our sons even the more that we might be able to go one more day, that we might be able to lift up our sons one more day and keep them going and keep encouraging them. So Pastor Angela Y.H. Armstrong's first ministry is that of a wife and mother of three sons. She is also a home educator. She's a prayer leader, facilitator. She's an author, a speaker, a publisher. She's a wellness advocate. She's a certified vision mentor coach and certified Christian life coach. She ministers alongside her husband, Toriano, Toriano, in their community outreach ministry, Powerhouse of Faith. As part of their ministry, they have established committed connection for Christian couples. I love that. Angela serves as the facilitator and the founder of Cafe for Women Sistership, a Christian prayer and Bible study connection where her passion for coaching, mentoring, and ministering to women shines. So Angela has her own publishing company and um, 3C coaching company um, where she specializes in leveraging your business and ministry by assisting you with creating literary work. And that's why I was like, eh, I, need to, I need to hook up with Angela. Um, <laughs> she unlocks, and I won't read it all. And I told Angela everything that I, if I don't read it, please elaborate on it because I'm sure somebody will be calling. It says, um, she unlocks the rights, and that's W-R-I-T-E, power secrets that navigate writers, entrepreneurs, and ministers through a pen to profitability path for her writing, uh, for their writing projects. She enjoys working with grow getters and visionaries to sharpen and strengthen them to sweep limiting beliefs and false and false perspectives out of their mindsets. So, um, and again, Angela, um, she is married to Toriana, Toriano and they have three sons. And then the last thing I read, um, I love it when she says her first ministry is that of a wife, a mother of three sons and she's a home educator. Uh, if you look up her on Facebook, it's I am Angela Wybett and join in her Facebook communities. And I'll put that in the chat. I am Angela Wybett, Yvette, Yvette. And join her Facebook communities. She has a Cafe for Women's Sistership and Moms Who Lead, Moms Who Lead. Um, so to stay connected, learn more about her products and services she offers. So I'm going to put her information in the chat. And I'm just excited about hearing from Angela with, with all that she has going on. And Angela, again, Pastor Angela, you can speak to about 8.45 or, or less if you want to speak um, less than that. And then we'll stop at around 8.45 to give people time to ask you questions, make comments, and then we will um, ask you if you would um, close in prayer. So it's on you, uh, Pastor Angela. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lori, for inviting me to uh, be an encourager on tonight and Good evening to everyone. I am just super excited, have been excited ever since I've gotten the invitation. And even as I have joined in as much as I can on these Tuesday nights, because some Tuesday nights I am in class, but the ones that I'm not, I do try to chime in and get some encouragement myself. So this is absolutely fabulous to me to see how you're ministering through, you know, to the moms with sons, because, you know, we, we sometimes look at the ones with daughters, but, you know, the moms with sons, you know, the ones who are those, as I say, you know, guy, guy moms, you know, or boy moms or young men moms. 
And so I'm just so excited to be here with you on tonight. I'm glad that each one of you are here. And I hope I say something that will be encouraging to you. Um, even if you may have heard it before, it's always good to reiterate what I tell my children is repetition puts it in your, in your brain. So repetition puts it in your brain. So if I say something you heard before, hey, you, you're just going to keep right on being in your brain and in your heart and your soul so that you can press on as a, as a marvelous son. And so on tonight, I will say that, you know, I think she pretty much summed it up with the bio. I'm not really that great at expressing too much about myself. <laughs> Um, but I will say that my Catholic Women's Sistership, I will be going to a new name um, in the very, very near future. It's going to be a faithful living with Angelique Vett. So um, that will change. So if you do want to be a part of that group when she puts the link in, please go ahead and use that link tonight because probably around about Friday, no later than next week, it's going to change. Um, that name of that group is going to change. And there's some reasons behind that as God has taken me to different levels. Um, so yeah, I wanted to be able to say that. And one of the things that I know that she didn't say about me is I, I have in there, you know, uh, above all else, I really do enjoy being a mom and a wife with a sword. And because I was a mom first before I was ever a, a, a wife, I was a mom. And so I've been a mom since 1994. And it's just been a journey of motherhood, you know, coming into all of this and just knowing that God blessed me with three sons. No daughters biologically, but take on daughters. I see Davida's here, you know, her daughter's my goddaughter. Um, and so, yeah, I take on all these daughters and, and even her niece, Odessa, she, she's like a daughter to me as well. So, and yes, Lori and I have been knowing each other for years. And, you know, because I met you through Francis, <laughs> you know, you and your husband, I met you all then, of course, saw you again um, at Trinity. And I was like, wow, I know the Joneses, I know them, you know, so. So yeah, so it's good to still be connected after all these years. And one of the things I can truly say about Laura and her husband, y'all truly inspired me even just um, with the whole marriage thing, because I think you all were like the first ones that I ever attended a marriage thing with at Trinity when you all were teaching. And I was like, that is so awesome. And so I still remember some of the things you all stated during that time. So on tonight, um, I know she said 845, so I'm going to try to make <laughs> You can't give a pass to the mic. No, I'm just playing. But anyway, <laughs> so tonight I was just preparing for this and have been preparing in my mind and in my heart ever since she gave me the invitation and just listening to some of the um, people who have been on. But the one last week, I was like, huh, I might as well just gone to say ditto. No, I'm just kidding. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> but still, my topic tonight is leave, living to leave a legacy. Living uh -huh. to leave a legacy. And I have a for you. Do you know where they're going to? Do you know where they're going to? And actually, I was watching the movie, and I don't know if any of y'all ever watched the movie Mahogany. It's a very, very old movie, but it came on a couple of weekends ago, and I saw that it was on, and I was like, oh, this is such a long movie, and I've seen it before, but then all of a sudden, I just felt compelled to watch it. Didn't know why I was watching this movie again after all these years um, with Donna Ross. I don't know if y'all have seen it with Billy D. Williams and Donna Ross, um, uh, Mahogany. But one of the things that I know one of the theme songs is, do you know where you're going to, you know? Um, but when I looked at that movie, it reminded me yet again, um, even though it has nothing to do with motherhood at all, but it reminded me of how we are to instill things into our children because I watched how Mahogany was and how determined she was in her with her dream as to what she wanted to do with designing clothes. And even though other people might have not been very supportive of it, she kept pushing. Even when she was on the stage and they were, you know, pretty much booing her, she still kept pushing and achieve her vision dream and that's one of the things that I say about us is you know do you know where your sons are going to and I base that on you know even my good girlfriend I like to say my good girlfriend Mary the mother of Jesus because I take a lot of pages from her I take a lot of things from her especially what she what happened in Luke 1 when the angel came upon her like she didn't look, look at her own understanding and, and and try to figure it all out herself she allowed for God to speak to her through the angel because she said how should this be saying I know not a man like 
she was told what she was going to do. She was going to have a son. She was told the name of the son. She was told what the son was going to be doing. And so at the end of the day, I said, how is that? You know, because I think about myself, even from my first son up until now, you know, I pretty much have reared them up along with my husband in the way in which they are to go because God spoke it. And I know certain things about my sons because of that, even when I'm carrying them in the womb. And so she told you all that I'm a home educator. I believe we all are home educators, whether you want, whether you are officially have a homeschool or decided during this time of COVID-19 to start a homeschool or your virtual learning, but you have been a home educator from day one of being pregnant. Why? Because when that baby is in the womb is when motherhood starts. It starts right then. Did you not speak to your baby? Did you not sing to your baby? Did you not, you know, read scripture to your baby, pray over the baby while they were in the womb? You started educating them then whether we realize it or not, even when you think about some of the things you may have said or done while the baby was in the womb and you wondering today, why in the world, where in the world did they get that from? Well, what was you saying and doing when they was in the womb? Because they ain't forgot, it's there. And so we have to keep those things in mind, even when we carry our children. What is it that we was instilling into them even then? When they were born, what was you saying to them? What was you speaking over them? What were you praying for? Because when you're living to leave a legacy, you have to remember that you are truly do your child a disservice if you're not instilling faith in them. If you have not introduced them to Jesus Christ, you're doing your child a disservice because that should be the firm foundation in the first place. Because again, I always say we can't control them you know, we, we can only direct them, but we cannot control them and we can't control their destiny because we're not the ones who created them. We're not the ones who established their destiny. God did. And this is the reason why we have to go back to the manufacturer. We have to go back to the creator all of the time as mothers, as nurturers of our sons. We have to keep going back to the creator and saying, what should I do with my son? How should I lead and guide them along with my husband if you're married? And you know, like, again, like I told you in the beginning, I was not. But one of the things I never did, even as a single mom, I never allowed for anybody to speak ill will over my son. If they said something negative, I was like, uh-uh, I snatched that back out of the atmosphere. I bind it in the name of Jesus. That's not going to work for my son. No, it might go for yours, but that's not going to work for mine. You know, and I would speak something positive to you know, to reiterate to them, listen, no, this is what's going to happen with mine. And so you have to be very bold like that with your sons because people will speak all kinds of things, especially those in the schoolhouse sometimes, you know, sometimes people will see your son do something that they didn't necessarily agree with. And then they want to label them and all this stuff. I'm like, uh-uh, we're not putting no labels on because I know who he be. So we so busy talking about who I am. No, I know who he be. And so we have to understand that you have to know who your son be. And so one of the things that I do know is this, when you think about it, there's a target. You think about like a big old target and a bow and arrow. Your child is the arrow, you're the bow. You're the one who's leading them. You're the one who's directed. And when you let it go, you want it to hit the target every time, right? So at the end of the day, that's how we have to think about it with our sons. We want them to hit their target every time. So the question is, do you know where they're going to? Do you know what they aspire to be? Do you understand their heart? Have you had some heart-to-heart -heart conversations with them? One of the things that I established in our homeschool a long time ago was heart checks, you know, and that was because of the simple fact that when you see or you hear your son doing something that's not quite right, and you say in heart check, like they know it's time to check myself. It's time for me to stop and check myself and that and to see if what I'm doing is this behavior something that exemplifies Christ. Is this behavior something that's pleasing to Christ? It ain't always about pleasing to mom. I want to make sure that they're pleasing to Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. you know, because if they're pleasing Christ, they automatically going to please their father and myself. And that's something we have to understand. If we instill that into them and keep leading them and training them in the way they should go, you know, that's what we're supposed to be doing. And so that's one of the things that I established with my children is that in the homeschool, because you have to let them see. And another thing I established is having that open conversation. 
Because if you don't allow for your sons to speak their heart, what's in their heart, you'll never know what's in it. I'm gonna let that sink in. If you don't let them speak from the heart, you will never know what's in it. So many people, especially with my oldest son, because he's the one that's so much like me, <laughs> you know, but the other ones, they have some things just like me, and then they have some things just like their dad. But at the end of the day, people were like, oh, well, he's being distracted. I said, no, he's not. He's saying exactly what he's thinking and feeling. And see, that lets me know how I need to go pray for him. But if you don't never let them speak and you always shutting them up and shutting them down, you know, because I remember the days of getting, you know, shushed and sent to the den. I know all of y'all didn't remember that. You know, you know, you'd be over there, auntie, great auntie house or grandma house or somebody and aunties and all of them is in there, uncle and all them talking and they want to shush you and send the children, send the children to the den, send the children in the den or send the children outside, you know, and you don't talk to them. No, you have to talk to them. You have to instill in them that right, what you want. You know, and I think about my upbringing. My mother and father didn't have any boys. You know, they my oldest son was their first grandson. But I think about the fact that I'm truly, you know, my daddy, you know, like I'm a daddy's girl, you know, but I think about how our conversations was growing up and how he allowed for me to express myself, how he allowed for me to speak openly. And we still have a great relationship today because of that, you know, and I can ask them whatever. And so I let my children do the same thing. They can ask me whatever. Because again, one of the things my mom instilled in me a long time ago, she's like, if you don't tell them, somebody else will, and they're going to tell them wrong. So make sure you tell them about anything. So what you want to do is you really want to be able to have that opportunity to build that faith. You want to have that trust factor with your children. They need to trust that you, you have their best interests at heart. Because if they don't trust that you have their best interests at heart, how are they going to be able to open up and talk to you? You got to have that time with your sons. Spend that time. I, I had something that I called mommy and me, you know, when they were younger. And even now I still say, don't you want some mommy and me time? I know they're big now, you know, <laughs> you know but, but at the end of the day, we still want to have that mommy and me time, even as adults. You might not call it that at that moment, but you still want that. Because you want to be able to have that open conversation with them, even as adults. One of the things that I said to my mom and to my husband is how proud I am of my oldest son, of how he's out there making it do what it do. Even in what we call it a pandemic, how he's out there making it do what it do. And I said, it makes me just so giddy inside to, to just know he's paying his bills and he's taking care of himself and he's not coming over here. Hey, can you spot me for my rent? You know, he's not doing that. Like he is really doing the things that we instilled in him. And then when I look at my, my middle son, you know, because again, we teach them to research their vision dream as well. You know, when they're in elementary, you know, you're teaching them. But one of the things I know in homeschool, you pretty much work yourself out of a job. You really want to get them to independent learning. And in that middle school age, especially eighth grade, is that year that I'm really saying, what is it you want to do? And those high school years, we're fixating them towards what they want to do. And I'm so excited and happy to even see how my middle son researched everything he wanted and did it on his own. You know, he can say, I did that by myself, you know, and I'm just excited about it because he did that. He listened. He didn't expect for me to do it for him. My, son, my older son did the same thing. And now the baby boy, he's doing the same thing. And I'm just excited to see their growth and where they're going and how they're moving. And I know that is because their father and me have instilled certain things in them. Yes. But I also know it's because of the relationship they have with God too. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so excited because one of the things that I know is, yeah, I do a lot of my praying and studying maybe behind closed doors where my husband does it out in the open and they see him reading his Bible and studying his Bible. And now when I can see my sons reading their Bible and studying their Bible, I'm like, yes, this is awesome. And, you know, and so it's so good to know that. So when you have that trust with your sons and you spend that time with them and be transparent, like it is okay to tell your sons about some of your shortcomings, some of the things that happened to you or you went through when you was young as an example, especially when you're seeing that same kind of behavior in them. Hmm. You know, I can pick up certain things with my sons. Why? Because I have been there and done it. No, I wasn't a boy, but I've been there and done it in the way that I did it. And some of them weren't right. And so I want to hear you in the right direction. Don't follow what I did. Let's do it the right way. And so you want to be able to continue to do that. So you use the word of God 
to correct them. You use the word of God to direct them. You use the word of God to instruct them and you use the word of God to edify them. Mm -hmm. Always, those are the things you want to make sure that you're doing all of the time. And one of the things that I say is that you have to get in a position where you are breaking the silence barrier because you don't want to have silence between you and your sons. So many parents talk about how their children are in the room playing video games and doing this and doing that. Or I see some that will give their sons or their daughters even their cell phones and, and different things, you know, even in church. And I was like, no, we're not bringing gadgets and gadgets to church. They will sit down beside me. They will listen to the pastor that's preaching. When they go to children's church, they better act right. Because I tell them what happens over here at 6501, this is, the, this is the practice. But when you get out there, that's the game. So you act crazy and go to the left, I'm act crazy and go to the left. You know, so that's just the thing. We have to understand that. And again, because of that, they know how to conduct themselves. I have so many different people who come to me and constantly are saying, oh, wow, you have such great boys. And I'm thinking, it's not just about me. It's about what God has instilled in my husband and myself and how to rear them up in the way they should go. It's all about what God has done and what they have accepted from God. You know, and that's the thing that I love the most because you know, when you instill the word in your children and you use it and you ask them, hey, is this pleasing to God? And it's because it's not about me. It's not, it's never been about me. It's all about, is this pleasing to God? Is what you're doing what God wants you to do? You know, because that's what I want them to always understand and know because that's so important. So even when I look at how people have come to me and, you know, they might see them post something on Facebook or something like that, you know, and they, it might be something that some people didn't quite like and they come to me, I'm like, you saw it, why didn't you say something? Like, what you come to me for? You know, and especially with the adult one, I'm like, what you coming to me for? You should have talked to him, what you telling me for? You know, but when I look at how people were saying how even my middle child, how he's defending his, the faith, is defending the word of God, in what he's saying on Facebook. I'm like, that is so awesome to me. Wow. I'm just like, yes, this is good. And then it's like, I'm just so proud of him. And I'm thinking, I'm proud of him too. I ain't even read it, but what you're telling me is awesome. You know? <laughs> you know, but I'm just like, I think it's great when you instill in them the right way to be. And so the thing about it is you have to allow for your children to be themselves. And give them that unconditional love as well. And that's one of the things that I really believe. Because I said, when they fall, you need to be there to help them get back up. Yes. But I always say, listen, give them enough rope to dangle, but just not enough to hang themselves. Okay. So just give them enough rope. Let them, let them, because we sometimes want to keep them right here on our hip. We can't do that. We can't cradle them. We can't. We can't baby them at all times because we we raising men. We raising them up to be men. And I just thought it was so great when the, the speaker last week was talking about that relationship with the mother and son and how that's so important. And she was dealing with all the, you know, the ins and outs of that last week. I was like, this is so great. I'm just, this is great information, you know, because it just goes along with what I know. And so I'm thinking, you know, about even when I was thinking about this whole lesson, I thought about even how we have to understand one thing about ourselves and our sons because a lot of times we think we be and then we do so that we can have something right that's mm -hmm. what we might think but that's not the proper way it is that we be and we have so we can do because when you think about the little woman the little woman who wanted to do what protect her sons they wanted to come and get her sons for the debt that her husband left. But she went to the prophet and he told her, he asked her a question, what do you have? He didn't say, what have you been doing? What have you been doing? Have you been in there? Have you been trying to get a, you know, work or do whatever? Or what have your sons been doing? He didn't ask that. He said, what do you have? Which means, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your possession? He said, nothing but a pot of oil. We didn't go borrow some vessels. And then what to do with it? And then now go sell it. And so that's the thing. She be who she was. Obviously, she had a relationship with God for the prophet to even be dealing with her and for her to understand to go to the prophet. But what did she have? She had the oil. She had it already, but she just didn't know what to do with it. So we have to understand what who our sons be, 
What do they have in them? What are the attributes that's in them? What are the possibilities? What are the potential? What is the potential that's within them? And then it's our job to show them what to do with it. You know, so we have to understand that those giftings, those talents that God has given to, now you, you have it, now what do you do with it? And most importantly, what do you do with it that's going to edify God, that's going to glorify God, that's going to please God? That's the thing. You know, it, the, the money comes. I tell people all the time, money going to come. But when you mission oriented, and you go out there and you do the mission that God is, you know, telling you to do and you all about what God is telling you to do, you're going to get what it is that you need. But be focused in and on who God says, I be what he has given me to have and what he wants me to do with it. And once you get that and get that whole notion, then you're able to push forward. And so that's some of the things that you got to understand. And having this faith wall has not always been you know, easy. We've had some hard times. I remember carrying my second child and going to the doctor to get my ultrasound. And you're so excited. You think you're going to know what the sex of the baby is. You think you're going to see the baby and everything. And my husband couldn't be at my first ultrasound because we have a trucking company. Um, and so he was on the road. So that particular time, there was a revival at Trinity, the church that we were going to at the time. And that Friday night, I was there. And this is the time, Lori, when Francis had been diagnosed with the breast cancer. And I, I went up to get prayer for Francis. That's what I was getting prayer, who I wanted to get prayer for. And so I told him, you know, I'm here. You know, I wanted to have you to pray for my aunt. She's been diagnosed with breast cancer, you know. And so the person that was there, she prayed. And she prayed for my aunt. But when she finished praying, she looked at me and she said, you came up here for somebody else. She said, but God wants to bless you. And she put her hand on my stomach and she said, he is fine. Now, mind you, I didn't know I was carrying a boy because the, the first ultrasound did not tell me the sex of the baby. And she just said, he is fine. Y'all, that was probably like a Thursday, Friday night. That Monday, I get a call from the doctor. And the, doc, the, the doctor's office, rather, one of his people called me and said that your ultrasound shows that you are carrying a Down syndrome baby. I said, oh, oh okay. She, so she went on to say, we want to be able to bring you in for some further testing. And I said, oh, okay, what are the tests? And so she said, she wanted to do an anesthetesis. I think it is, that's with that long needle. And they wanted to do, I think it's a level two, level three, or just say whatever, then I can't remember. And so I said, okay, isn't the anesthesia that needle thing? And she said, yes. And then she started explaining what it is. And I said, no. I said, what is the level three ultrasound or whatever? What is that? And she said, well, it's a more in-depth ultrasound. It goes in and you'll be able to see more in depth about your baby, the, the, the bones, the, you know, just more things than you see on a regular ultrasound. I said, okay, great. You can set me up for that, but you cannot set me up for the anesthesia because there's nothing wrong with my baby. And she's like, what? I said, there's nothing wrong with my baby. And she said, well, we, and I said, I understand what you're saying. You can do this. And I wanted to level two, three, whatever other sign it was, because I knew my husband hadn't been able to come to the first one. But I said, there's nothing wrong with my baby. Notice I'm speaking in faith. I know what their stuff may have shown, but I'm speaking in faith because what? The woman of God had already said, he is fine. So I'm going to believe the report of the Lord, not what the doctor is saying. So when we went to go to get this in-depth ultrasound, they was just doing ultrasound and doing ultrasound. And mind you, at that time, I know that he said, you know, he's fine. So I'm, I'm believing, okay, I'm carrying a boy. So they didn't necessarily have to tell me it was a boy, but they did. So they confirmed that. And then they was like, well, why are you even here? I said, well, they told me I was carrying a Down syndrome baby. They was like, no, you're not. They said a Down syndrome baby, and they started showing me a Down syndrome baby spine would be like this. Do you see your baby's spine? This is a healthy spine. And they went forth with every single thing. So by the time the doctor's office calls me back, same woman, and she said, um, well, we, we got the report back and everything. And I said, yeah, I know. And she was like, how can you have been so positive like that? I said, what else am I supposed to be? 
when else am I supposed to be? Because think about it. What did I tell y'all in the beginning? You educate your children from the womb. If I had broke down and broke into fear and doubt and everything and not believe in the word of the Lord, where would my son be today? Who knows? I know Pastor Simmons often would, would joke around with me all the time and be like, they talk about that baby's a down syndrome. He came out with up syndrome. I mean, that baby just been energetic ever since. And he was the church baby and everything. And they was always having him all around the church when I bring him, I bring him in a stroller thinking he's going to sit in the stroller, but they take him out and bounce him from person to person, you know, but the thing is, I had faith. Mm. And that is what I say that you do your children a disservice if you don't instill faith in them. And you have to do it even from the womb up until adulthood and even beyond. You have to be that one that instills that faith over and over. Even if you have fear, even if you have doubt, you can say that, you can be transparent with your children and say, you know, because what the scriptures say, I believe or help my unbelief. So we can tell them when we may have some fear and doubt. But one of the things that I had was faith all along. I've had faith for years. I had faith the size of a mustard seed as a single mom and it grew and it's growing and it's still growing today. And I'm excited about where God is taking us because of the faith. Mm -hmm. And when I look at my children, I have faith to believe that whatever they say they want to be, they will be. Whatever they say that they want to do, they will do. God will provide the, the provision for the vision. But guess what, y'all? God will not give you provision for a vision that, that you're not moving in. Mm -hmm. Teach your children to move in it. Teach your children to walk in it. Teach your children to research what it is that they want to do because when they do that, they have something invested in it. When you go and do it all for them and you lay it out and you didn't found a school and you didn't found everything for them and then they sitting there just stepping into it, their heart and soul not going to be in there. Why so many children go to college and, and just end up partying their way out of school? Because they didn't really want to be there in the first place. And one of the things I told my children is you do not have to go to college if that's not your portion. Because what I'm not going to do is put money in something that you don't want. That's right. So tell me what it is that you want. But also tell me what your backup plan is. Because we're going to be proactive. This is what your heart and soul want to do. But when this is not working, what's your backup plan? Because we mm -hmm. need some rivers of revenue. We don't need just one river. We don't need no streams. I was like, no, I'm past the streams. I want rivers of revenue flowing. <laughs> You know, because when y'all leave, I need y'all to understand, since God made me a boy mom, I've been the only queen in this castle. So when y'all leave and you get married, y'all got to know how to take care of your house because she can't come up in here unless y'all sick or something. Okay, I just need you to know that. I'm a lover like a daughter. I'm being excited when I get me some daughter-in-laws. Like I'm really going to be excited. I'm a hope for some granddaughters. But it is. Hey, I'm raising you up that when you leave, you come back and visit, but you're not coming back to move in. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the things I know. I left her home at 17 and I've only spent a, a, as most as two weeks with my parents. So I want them to go out and do the same thing and be successful. So you have to train them up. You have to show them the way. And you have to make sure that you're aiming that arrow at the target. And when you let it go, let it go. Remember, when you let it go, the arrow is gone. You can't, you know, it hits the target. You, so keeping that in mind. So I'm saying that to some of you, and I don't know who this is for, but let the son go. He's going to be fine. You've raised him up in the way that he should go. Let him go. Let him show you. Because that's one of the things that I said to one of my you know, spiritual parents when leaving a particular church and going forth and establishing ministry. I said, if I'd never done that, you would never know if what you taught me work. That's mm -hmm. the same thing with your children. Mm -hmm. If you don't let them go and do it, you will never know if you really train them up in the way they should go. If you don't never let them fly. Like I said, you can give them enough rope, let them dangle, but just don't give them enough to hang themselves. So it's okay to have enough to wheel them back in for a minute and train them up a little bit more, but let them go out, let them go. Because if you don't, you're gonna really do them a disservice. You know, I know my daughter-in-laws are going to be some excited women because, you know, two of my sons definitely, you know, cook because one of them cook for a living, the other one wants to be a chef, 
you know, but all of my children have always been, you know, doing their own laundry, helping clean in the house, doing all these things. But all of that was a part of rearing them up in the way that it should go. So whenever they get out there, they can know how to take care of a house. They can understand that it's an interdependent thing when you get married. It's not one dependent on the other. It's an interdependent and everybody's doing their part. But if she can't cook, you're going to be able to cook. If she can't wash them clothes, you know how to separate them and wash them and fold them and then put them away. You know how to do it. So just know that when she can't, you can. And so that's the kind of things that you have to remember when rearing up your sons. When you're living to leave a legacy because you want to be able to show them the way that they should go. So do you know where they're going to? I know you're not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> I was so in tune. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Angela. I knew it would be good. I knew it would be good. I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to let some others chime in. Um, and I have to say, I have to say this. I always had like a uh, kind of a backup message just in case something ever happens to any of the speakers and they can't make it. So you just took my message. So I'm going to have to go back and get another one. Uh, something very similar to that, leaving a legacy. But that was fantastic. I love it when you say it, um, go back to the creator. We got to go back to the creator for instructions. That was so profound. And then you met when you were talking about your faith, it reminded me of one of the other speakers when they, when they talked about um, openly demonstrate your faith. We got to openly demonstrate our faith before our children. So that, that was awesome about um, just showing them what faith is all about. Yeah. I'm going to pause for just a minute before I read my other notes and see if anybody else has any comments or questions for Pastor Angela. Thank you so much for that. That was awesome. 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 Any comments from anybody? Now, and Pastor Angela's information is in the chat for anybody that wants, that's interested in joining um, any of her ministries, any of her ministries. Any comments? Well, I just want to say thank you to Pastor Angela for, uh, for that word. And I received that word. Mm -hmm. I received that word. I think I Lori knows exactly what I'm talking about, <laughs> but uh Thank you, because I need to release him. I really do. So just pray for my son, William Gundy, and, and uh, what he has on the way, May 5th. <laughs> and just, you know, just, you know, raise them up in the way they should go. I'm leading and I'm guiding as much as I can. Thank you, ladies. Well, amen, amen, perfect, perfect. Hi, Angela. This is Reverend Barbara. I really enjoyed it. That was an awesome, awesome. I love every word of it. I know. How to teach them how to stand. That, that was good. Amen. I was wondering if she, if she got all them, that she got herself all incognito over there with all them numbers and letters. You, you know that. <laughs> I, I normally change her name, but I didn't even think about it tonight. I don't even think about it. <laughs> you don't never know when, when, when she <laughs> So you got a, some message. Awesome job and amen. But Angela, I, I loved it too when you were saying um, help them to move into their vision, but let them do something too. Don't just do it all for them. You know, you write the vision and you make it plain instead of them. <laughs> Instead of you allowing them to, to participate in what God is calling them to do. And, and I love when you say, you know, what, where are they going? What are their gifts? What are their talents? Help them to find out what that is. And then and what are you doing for God? How are you using your gifts and your talents for God? You know, that, that, is, that is so awesome. We, got, we need to have that conversation with our sons. What do, you, what do you think your talents are? What do you think your gifts are? And then do you, are you using them for God to bless the kingdom of God? That is, that is that's great. I love it. Amen. Um, oh, Angela, great job. Well, look, and, and go ahead. Tell me you can go. Uh, Angela, I, I just want, um, I thoroughly enjoyed the message. Um, you, you stepping all over my toes. Um, and I, and I, I, I am like, um, uh, Don, um, 
I think I think I I let go. I I desire to let go later in life. You know, I, you know, for a long time I beat myself up though. I said, you know, I should have did this, this, and this. But I thank God that um, the open conversations that uh, women are having now um, to help one another. You know, we're not so secretive now. Um, we are willing to share. And I, I, I just wish we had this early on, but you know, it, to everything it's a season. So some things we just have to go through uh, in order to uh, share it with others. Um, so I don't I don't beat myself up as much as I used to, but mm -hmm. I thank God for just the teaching that I'm learning now and for me to just encourage my sons, because I have three sons, too, um, now to encourage my sons to do more than what I did. You know, the foundation, we laid the foundation, but um, a lot of one on one and, and, and really asking them what they want to do in life. Hmm. Um, I started that later in life. I wish I had done that early on in life. But like I said, everything, uh, you learn it. You learn it's, it's never too late to learn and to pass on to someone else. So I just thank you for sharing and uh, just uh, encourage uh, other women, keep, keep sharing your stories because we need it. We need these stories just to continue to build on and not beat ourselves up because something that we did not do, we, you know, just learn from it and keep moving forward. So thank you. Thank you again for sharing. Amen. Isn't it amazing how we can be late, but be with God, we're right on time. Amen. Yes, <laughs> always. And you don't have to beat yourself up either because one of the things I was told years ago, especially home educating my children, you know, one mother, you know, that was, had been homeschooling her three sons way longer than I had, had been homeschooling mine. And she's like, Angela, you can't mess them up. God gave them to you. God gave them to you. And you know, and that, what that said to me was, he knows all my hiccups and hangups, but yet he gave them to me. Wow. God. Therefore, so therefore, I don't have to beat myself up because he created me, me, and he created them, them. And so therefore, when you have messed up, you just go and you admit that you messed up and wow. keep okay. moving forward. Don't let the enemy use that against you. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Stephanie, do you have a comment? I have a couple more. <laughs> Stephanie, did you have a comment? Uh, I was going to say, um, I thoroughly enjoyed it too, and I really love the part about um, all of us are home educators and um, her testimony about from the womb you know, just kind of, we're training from the womb. We don't, you know, realize that. And so just kind of be guarded and intentional about our words and stuff. So thank you for that testimony. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, and, and Pastor Angela reminded us that we're doing our, our children a disservice if, if we're not speaking Christ to them. Every chance we get, we gotta be planting seeds. I mean, just a little bit here, a little bit there. And, and the mothers on the, on the line, on the call with the, with the young babies, the two, three, four, five, six, seven-year-olds. I mean, man, this is a great time, great opportunity. Those of us with grandbabies, you know, just great opportunity to be, I mean, it's always a great opportunity to speak the word of God, but just, mm -hmm. just a chance to be able to shape them and form them and, you know, just have a, it's a great opportunity. Amen, amen. Very good. Wonderful. And then those heart checks. Let them speak their hearts. So you know what you're thinking. That's, that was great. Pastor Angela, thank you so much. Any other comments? Ask the woman of God to close us in prayer if there, if there are no other anything else. Amen. Amen. Again, Angela, uh, Pastor Angela's information is in the chat. Uh, Pastor Angela, is there anything that you want to say about your ministries? I know you said that. Um, one one of them, the name is changing. Which one was that again? The Cafe for Women. Cafe for Women. The name, the name is changing. Yeah. And, and um, everybody to see all the information there. Yeah. I would definitely be checking you out. Um, but I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time because, um, you know, as Pastor Angela said, she is in school 
um, just doing so much for the kingdom of God. And I saw one of your sons sitting behind you. Um, and he's probably gone. So tell him thank you for just, is he listening in? Both of my sons are sitting right here. Oh, that really, um, and they don't want to show their face, do they? And we just want to say hi. <laughs> I just want to say hi. You want to say hi? Just say it, they can hear you. Hi. Did you hear him? We heard him, yeah. Just tell them we appreciate them for being the men of God that they are. Just being examples. We appreciate them so much. Amen. Amen. So, and then we thank you and your husband for what you're doing. What you're doing for the kingdom of God, because what you're doing is for the kingdom of God. So thank you for that. Amen. My husband is on here too. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I thought I saw his name. Yeah, he's he's driving. I see it. I see it. Yeah, he's hiding. <laughs> driving. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Armstrong, for what you guys are doing uh, for the kingdom of God. Um, and then all the mothers, under the sound of my voice, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we're all needed in uh, the kingdom of God. We're all needed. The gifts, the talents. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? Have that conversation with your, with your children, with your sons. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? How are you using your talents to bless um, the kingdom of God? Amen. Nothing else. I'm so excited. Um, thank you, Pastor Angela, again. There's nothing else I'm going to ask if she'll close us in prayer. All right. The, the soul of a nation comes out at 10, y'all, on channel 11. No. Soul of a nation? Soul of a nation. Talking about Black history. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, well, thank you again, Lori, for having me. And I thank my husband and sons for being here to support me. I did ask them to, to be here in some form or fashion. This is being right here. They didn't need to be on Zoom. But <laughs> does, does, he, does he have anything that he wanted to say? I didn't, I didn't want to put him on the spot. Turn out and you got something you want to say. <laughs> no, I'm good. Just say hello. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I will say this. As I was preparing for tonight, God laid a song on my heart. No, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to spare y'all of that one. Um, but is No no Greater Love by um, Smokey um, Norfolk. And in looking at um, at that song, and just because y'all didn't know why it was just on me, I had to play it while I was preparing for this, and and then I had to go back and look at the lyrics of it, and it just talked about, do you mind if I testify, I tell you of the goodness of my Lord, share some of what He's done for me, how He's opened up so many doors. You may look at me from the outside and think I got here on my own. But there's no way that you could ever know how much grace and mercy I've been shown. Oh, if you look into my eyes, you'll see. Life has tried to get the best of me, but I know the giver of life personally. And he's the reason that I sing. His name is Jesus and he loves me. And I know this because he died for me and he rescued me. There's no greater love in the world. And then it says, there are so many things I want to tell you of how he made a way for me. If he hadn't loved me through the mistakes that I've made, I just don't know where I would be. He showed me so much favor. And now I understand amazing grace. Through all the pain, all of the same, I realize there's nothing that could take the place. And, the, and it was, you know, goes back into the course, you know, Jesus, you love me. And I know this because he died for me. But the thing about this song that really got me was those lyrics, because when I think about that, and I think about the raising of our sons or the raising of our children, period, giving them that testimony of just knowing how many doors God has opened up and how many mistakes that we may have made, but God is still there. So as I pray tonight over you, I want you just to remember that that God is still there. And no matter what we do, because even as adults, we make mistakes. None of us is exempt from a mistake. Mm -hmm. As we pray and y'all go and listen to the song and let it minister to you the way it ministered to me as I prepared for tonight to be here with you all. And like I said, if I was a singer, maybe I would have sung a little bit. I have to have Robert sing it. <laughs> but Lord, we just thank you. 
And we glorify you. We honor you on tonight, God. We thank you for allowing us to be mothers with sons. We thank you, God, on how you lead and guide us through all this encouragement. I thank you for Lori and how she's established this particular platform for us to be encouraged as mothers with sons and how she just continues to have each person that comes forth as she's prayed and she has asked you, who is it that will it be the encourager? God, I thank you that each one has said yes. I thank you that each one has prepared and has continued to pour into us, God. And as we go forth, God, and take all that is being instilled in us, God, that we will use it for the uplifting of you, that we will use it as we upbring in our children, and we will use it even as our children get older and, and get grown and out of our home. We will still use this inspiration. We will still use these instructions. We will still use this encouragement. We we will hold on to it and remember and remember and I do pray for William I don't know what he has coming on May 5th but I pray for him and and whatever it is God I know you will bless it you will help him you will guide him you will direct him and Don will be there to help with him as well even though she's letting go she will learn how to let go in a way but yet still be present to be there when he calls out for help and so, Lord, I just thank you for that. And I glorify you, Lord, that she was able to receive something from you tonight that will help her in this process, help her with this thing, God, such that she can push forth and she will have a mighty testimony from it for some other mother that she will come across that may be going through something similar. And so, Lord, I just thank you for that. And I thank you, Lord, for even this song that has ministered to my very heart, God. And I thank you, Lord, that we will always remember that you're there and you're the one who died for us, Jesus. You're the one who rescued us. And there is no greater love in the world than that. And so, Lord, let us just continue to remember that and not do our children a disservice, but continue to instill faith, continue to plant the seed of faith, continue to plant the seed of salvation. No, they may not get saved when they're little, but when they're older, they will remember. And so we do keep that in mind. And so, Lord, I just thank you that when we live this good, this, this life of faith and we continue to fight the good fight of faith, that we are really instilling in our children what they need. And when they see us doing it before them, and we're very transparent, even of our shortcomings, that they see how you have forgiven. They see how we have changed and how we have grown before them. And so Lord, I thank you that they will see that they can grow too. Yes. And I give you praise God for what you're doing for each one of our sons. And that as we continue to ask them, do you know what's inside of you? Do you know the gifts and the talents that God has placed there for you? Do you understand the possibilities that are for you, the potential that's within you to prosper? And I do wish above all things, God, that they will prosper and be in health even as their souls prosper. So Lord, let us continue to instill the word in them and feed their soul. God, I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Angela. Thank you so much, ladies and uh, Mr. Armstrong for joining us. And everybody, y'all have a wonderful night. Good night.